Hey guys, welcome back to another Halo Wars 2 Advanced Guide. Today we'll be covering Professor Anders, whose main play style revolves around tech players and sentinels as her unique leader powers. A few months back, she was one of the best leaders in the game, but received some huge nerfs to her R&D leader power, which scaled her back massively, but is still regarded as one of the top UNSC leaders. She still has one of the best heroes in the game, and her unique Kodiaks and ability to drop in a super unit at any given time is nothing to be overlooked, and still makes her a solid pick for most matchups and unpredictable maps on the ladder. There are a few different strategies you can execute with Anders, so let's jump right in and take a look at her leader powers, how they work, what order you should take, and how they string together. So guys, we're going to take you through the leader power order for Anders and how to best utilize her abilities to win games and win engagements. So Anders received a pretty significant nerf back in December, January time to her R&D leader power. Um, originally, you, it was set at 25% for R&D 1, 50% for R&D 2 in terms of cost reduction and research time. Um, so you could research grenades in like eight seconds uh, they only cost you 200 and her early game was extremely strong um, where you could go the Spartan Douglas along with her infantry get the infantry upgrades the grenade upgrades quite easily and then when you hit tech 2 you get that huge power spike of hitting combat tech getting the rockets with Douglas you could get dispersion nozzles way before your opponent at half the cost and pretty much do anything with Anders on top of that she had the amazing Kodiaks with the sentinel ability to synergize with that super strong army and then straight after that she could jump into a retriever sentinel and while you're still trying to battle these Kodiaks and this army of marines stripping all your pads and killing your army uh, you then have to deal with a retriever sentinel sitting in while her economy is absolutely bullet mean so they were well deserved nerfs um, but I feel like they over nerfed her um, essentially in the R&D department so R&D 1 now actually gives you 15% cost reduction instead of 25 and R&D 2 they said it was reduced to 30% when we did some testing it actually comes out at 28% so an extra 2% nerf there but still her early game was uh, affected quite a lot um, but the first two leader points essentially the only way to go is R&D 1 and 2. You're still going to get your upgrades faster than your opponents. They're still going to be cheaper than your opponents. Um, and that is essentially her kind of only strategy early on. You could argue that you could go heal second point to help you in those hard engagements. Uh, help you win those hard engagements. Um, but essentially you want R&D 1 and 2. So your army is always going to be stronger. And your focus throughout the game is to upgrade your stuff as quickly as possible. To keep that advantage throughout the game. Now, second point with An uh, third point, sorry, with Anders, she doesn't really have a lot of nukes in her kit until you get to about the Sentinel network. So, really, uh, just a guide rule here: if you're playing against an infantry army, like against Cutter or someone like that, uh, you can go turret drop. Uh, you can stun the army with that. Um, it works very well against infantry. It even works well against pads and buildings and stuff like that. If you're playing against vehicles, art defense is the better option. There's a lot more damage to vehicles. And again, you can use that um, to help deal damage to base pads, uh, to mini bases, uh, and, and basically deter your opponent and push them away. If you're losing engagement, you can use that to escape. So in this instance, we're going to be going art defense to show you a quick demo of that. And... Now we get to fourth point. This is where we can really start changing things up a bit. So fourth point, essentially, you're going to be going Sentinel Synergy or Sentinel Beacon. I've been doing a lot of testing with Anders over these last couple of weeks, and the only really solid option for her mid-game is to go Sentinel Beacon. Now, for those who don't know, what Sentinel Beacon does is it gives the Kodiaks and Seize Turrets the ability to summon aggressive Sentinels, uh, which you'll see here on the out defense. Um, each shell... Um, spawns one aggressor sentinel uh, but when massed with eight or nine kodiaks it can become very hard for your opponent to deal with they almost definitely have to go into air to deal with it to try and pick off those kodiaks and kill it in which case from your Andy one and two and your early tech one game you already have a lot of marines um, you're going to be going combat tech in the mid game as well which absolutely shreds through any early uh, air in the tech one tech two phase um, so you should be able to deal with that pretty easily and help your economy get a second base snowball the game from there um, So we're gonna be going sentinel beacon this time. This is where things can really change 
so for your fifth point Sentinel Synergy, so let me explain what this does. So this is going to help your Kodiaks out. It's going to spawn more of those Sentinels on the shells. Um, so they're going to be doing extra damage. They're going to be spawning for longer. Uh, just doing more damage overall to help your army. Um, so that's a good option to do. The most important thing, and the, the main reason you go for Sentinel Synergy, is to get the shield for your Retriever Sentinel. Because that's going to be your next point. Generally, what I've been doing is I've been going into Sentinel Beacon to secure the game, secure map control, and then going straight into a Retriever Sentinel if I've got the economy for it. So I'm on two bases, full economy, not really losing a lot of units, and got a lot of resources. So this thing costs 2,000 blue, 2,000 power, but it's not like any other super unit. You can literally just drop it in. Um, it's got no build time. So the timing push of that Retriever Sentinel is extremely crucial. Um, you can kill a base with it, you can help your army with it and kill it but what you need to know is that if you go and retrieve a sentinel first without the shield it's extremely weak do not use your wire ability with the retriever sentinel in engagements because reavers and wolverines will just focus it down and kill it almost immediately the animation is extremely long um, and you can't cancel it so you just need to be aware of that not to use the wire ability uh, without the shield at least so if you go and retrieve a sentinel you're going to double back immediately for the shield um, you definitely need that shield and it becomes extremely strong. You can fly on the map over terrain, um, snipe bases where the enemy is in and basically just keep mobile and rotate around, killing their economy, taking out many bases, taking out pads and stuff like that and then darting out and slowly wearing your opponent down. Um, the other option, so after Sentinel Beacon, um, if you're still kind of behind in the game, you can go straight into Sentinel Network. You drop that Sentinel Network in. Sentinel Network is a wave of Sentinels which drop EMPs down um, on enemy units. And it does a lot of damage, but not only that, it gives you full map vision. So if you're dropping this, say, like central, centrally in the map, um, on a big map, uh, Bedrock's quite narrow, but you'll get full vision of essentially the map and you'll see everything your opponent's positioning what bases they have and things like that so that's another extremely good power and it's an extremely good nuke as well um, and then from there this so this step is going to be like if you're in a long game um, you can then go for the shield then the retriever sentinel because you're already on six seven eight point by this point but these three points here so your sentinel synergy sentinel network and retriever sentinel are going to be your late game go-to points um, you will need those if you're going to survive and win the late game after that you can really snowball into anything so you've got you can go heal tr all points into heal if you want this were extremely good uh art defense turret drop just to give you that extra stuns in the engagements and then art defense level three there's a lot of sentinels on there does a lot of damage lasts a long time um even later into the game you can go protect to sentinels um in mass these are really good uh, when fully upgraded so if you've got all the upgrades your drone escorts um the okay guys so like the last three, guard we're going to be using level three real in game upgrades and stuff like level that gameplay um, examples these are extremely strong uh, the best mass. example i could find was from one of my live streams i haven't managed to capture any footage off stream for that um so we've had to mute all the audio so you're not hearing my voice twice over this um, so in this game, um, I think we're playing a Rock Generation Smith, um, which is, I believe, quite a Spartan. Um, it's like top 20 champ or something like that. Um, so a really good example because he is Atriox and Atriox is a very good leader and a tough opponent to play against. So you'll see in the early game on Rift here, we'll be opening up Jackrabbit. That's just so we can secure some of this side power, which is basically too far away from Marine to run if you want to grab that before the Banished player does. Now. Whenever you're playing against Banished and you're a UNSC player, your main priority is to grab your mini bases because if one of those gets stolen, it's so difficult to retake it back because Flamer's base DPS is just not as good as the Banished unit building killers. And on top of that, if they do manage to steal one, they get a raid camp on there and then they just spam choppers. There's nothing you can do to stop them from getting to your main base and doing some serious damage. So number one priority is to get your mini bases. And as you see here on the screen now, the chopper is harassing my marine going for the mini base steal which I just managed to pick up unfortunately he's going to see my marine he's going to kill my marine so that's going to set us back a little bit uh, but not to worry we're still collecting resources across the map and he's just wasting his time here with his chopper uh, while we pick up those resources so I've been testing a lot with Anders uh, prior to this video especially with her nerfs um, previously uh, to the R&D and 
Her early game is uh, extremely tough go going into that Tech 2 game as well uh, against most leaders because of that nerf. The nerf was absolutely huge on her R&D. Um, so you need to be playing a bit more careful in the early game, uh, especially when you come up against the likes of banished players um, with choppers and good hero units like here, Triox and Colony. And especially when you're playing against for example, infantry base leaders like Cutter because her infantry just is nowhere near as good as Cutter's. So you have to play a little bit more safer than you used to with Anders because um, you're not going to get those upgrades as fast. They're going to cost you more, so your tech's going to be late uh, and that power spike in tech 2 is going to be uh, late as well. Um, so you'll notice going on in this early game, all we're going to be playing for is power nodes. We're not going to be looking to push. We're not going to be looking to engage his army because uh, he will beat us in a head-on engagement. Um, Anders early on has no nukes, no leader powers that can help her win unless you're going to be swapping R&D2 for mines with a Spartan Slam or something like that but that's not usually what you want to be going with Anders. R&D2 is still a good leader power because you're still getting your upgrades cheaper and faster than your opponent throughout the game no matter what composition of army you're going to be going into so it's still a really good power to go into you just have to make sure you survive that early game to be able to get into it. So you'll see the Spartans out because his, his Atriox, why would he not go Chosen? Uh, they all go Chosen, it's uh, a really strong hero unit. And we're just going to pick off this chopper here, it's a good pick off. And then we're just going to start working on the power nodes. Three minutes in, uh, we're about 700 power away from Tech 2. And you'll notice against Banish, we cancelled that barracks. We made a decision to cancel it because we we're expecting him to go choppers. And we're going to avoid the Chosen. So we don't need snipers to get in the head on engagements. We want to save the power from those snipers. We're just going to build Marines and Spartan uh, and avoid that Chosen. So the second our Spartan's out and he has his upgrade, we're going to be swapping that armory for a second generator. And that's across the board generally what you want to do with all leaders. If you're going hero, the second you get your Spartan out or your hero out upgraded, you want to recycle the armory, get some money back for that and immediately build your second generator and upgrade that. So we're just trying to get as much units out as possible now uh, with the Marines, uh, the Spartan. We're going to go start throwing some scouts around the map and get them in the garrisons on Rift. Um, so that can be really good and give you some good information as where the army is. So this one marine over here has just seen the chosen. So we're definitely not going to be pushing to the left hand side. We're going to be going straight to the right hand side power node uh, after we take this central one. That's if we manage to get the central one because it looks like he's getting a bit aggressive, which is why we double bat to put a turret on our base just in case we do get a push. He might have some sneaky jump out brutes coming around from a mini base somewhere. We we don't know. We haven't scouted that yet. But initially on the initial scout, he didn't have a barracks. Um, he just had. The, the armory so we see a lot of grunts potentially going grunts with chosen and playing tech 2 just like we are uh, the only difference is that anders can go into tech 2 kodiaks which is extremely strong so we catch a lot of grunts out here which is good for us because our spartan should be able to kill them uh, we actually get stuck in an assassination animation which absolutely sucks because we could have wiped that whole army and there's no way to cancel it thanks 343 for uh, putting those uh, beautiful animations in the game. So five minutes in, we're about to get tech two. Uh, we took three power nodes. You'll see our opponent working hard as well, taking the power nodes back off us. Um, and he has countermeasures. He's dropping mines on there, so we're going to probably have to send two marines or some detect um, to try and clear those power nodes. Chosen sweeps all the way across to the right hand side, so we're immediately going to go to the left hand side and start taking those power nodes back. Uh, we're just avoiding the Chosen at all costs here because we've got nothing really to kill it. If we go in a fight, it could go 50-50, but most likely it's going to be going their way. So, on to the third leader power point that came up here. We're choosing to go turret drop. Now, there's a few reasons I chose this in this matchup, and as I explained in the leader power section earlier, you can either go art defense or turret drop. Um, now, I want to try and combo that with stunning the Chosen, getting the Chosen out of the fight. Um, so he's scouting my expert here as well. So we want to try and get the Chosen out of the fight with a turret drop stun. Uh, we want to focus him down. And obviously Douglas has a slam as well to stun him even further. So we want to negate as much damage from that Chosen as possible um, in the next engagement if we choose to do so. And the opponent isn't going vehicles. So that's why we didn't choose our defense. And we're not going to be going for a sneaky push on his generator or anything like that. Our main aim at the moment is to get our economy up and running, the expo up and running. Uh, we see a fed generator going down now um, and we're going to start pumping Kodiaks as well. So in my mind right now, 
I'm already thinking of the late game, so I'm thinking of getting the Kodiak up. I'm thinking of saving up for that Sentinel um, when it should come, and we're going to be taking the Kodiak power in a second. And that's basically going to establish um, our little base here. On Rift, it's really hard to push the Expo in front of your base because you've got two bases there, your reinforcements are coming really fast. You've got the high ground for the Kodiak, so this is actually a really good map for us to get Anders on. If this was anything like Frontier, or Mirage or Fishers or something like that. This Chosen would be all up in our face, absolutely wrecking our shit, and there'd be absolutely nothing UNSC players can do about it if they're going choppers with that as well. So we actually have some breathing space being on Rift. So you'll see we're kind of making him micro his Chosen across to save these power nodes uh, with these Marines and just open up opportunities for us to push and pick off a few new units on the opposite side of the Chosen. Now we got Dougie with his uh, rocket launcher. It's extremely strong. There is an auto cancelling trick that you can do with Douglas and it absolutely shreds units, especially uh, air units. So you'll see how our early game is struggling here as well. Like he's had four power nodes for pretty much the whole game. We haven't managed to take them back. We haven't managed to secure them. He's got grunts on hold grounds on them. And obviously he's got the chosen chasing us as well. So we got Dougie uh, actually pushed up too far here. So that's a mistake by us. We're going to try and save him, jump onto the ledge and get away. Just because we ran straight into the chosen, but the good thing about this, the reason we don't run back to our base is because they'll chase you down and then you're stuck at your base and they're attacking your base with no units. We dragged them away so they had to chase this Spartan to kill him and we can just rebuild him. And now we're getting Kodiak set up at our base as well. So at this moment in time, we're in an extremely tough spot until we get enough Kodiak set up. And he's already pushing, so we're not ready at this moment in time. So we just got to do the best we can to hold this. Um, a nice little beam comes down from him on our one Kodiak we have set up. So that was our only base of defense. And we have to scramble to actually save this base here. So we've got turrets coming up. Doesn't have a lot of base damage. Uh, he's, got, he's got the Marauders, gonna put the Snipers micro to them to the back. We're gonna try and keep this Wolverine alive because uh, engines uh, obviously negate 40% damage um, when they pop that NG bubble. So you wanna get rid of those as quickly as possible. Another turret coming down. This is our only base of defense. You'll notice we've got 24 population right now. Our army's getting picked off and his army's way stronger than ours at this moment in time. So we're just gonna spam and try and do the best we can. As soon as we can get a Kodiak up to help us would be great. And you'll see how slow this has been compared to how Anders used to be. We're nine minutes in and we, we basically have not, nothing set up um, as of yet because of how aggressive the opponent's been with those power nerds. Has already taken down two turrets. We finally got a Kodiak set up. I don't think he has a shroud in the mix yet, so this should do a lot of damage. The good thing about Marines as well is that they're so cheap to build. Uh, and they do a lot of damage when you have combat tech, which is a good thing to go from. So we made him waste a bulwark there. Um, without using any of our own leader powers, so that's good from us. And he, he really wants this base, he's really staying to try and kill this base, and he's probably going to get it. Uh, that's unfortunate for us. Bit of an issue there. Um, now, it, this looks impossible if you look at the map, just looks absolutely impossible for us to win this. But we've almost got the Sentinel, like I said, we were saving up for that earlier. Um, and we got 2k power in the bank, we could cancel that Kodiak and basically get enough blue. Um, and the Sentinel is just going to completely turn this fight around. Uh, and that's desperately what we need now. It's just about to come around the corner. And look how much damage these Kodiaks are doing to this army just because he doesn't have shrouds. So you'll see me now scrambling to cancel everything to save up the blue uh, for the Sentinel to be able to do enough damage to force this army away and kill some of this army. He only has one Reaver, remember, so... Luckily we have a Marine on hold ground over here so we can drop the Sentinel on his main base and deter the army back and um, save ourselves while we rebuild. We've got 18 population and a dream here guys. 
He's got all the power nodes, completely dominated the game, but you'll see in a second how powerful this Sentinel is. Um, and we didn't even manage to get full strength Anders here. We didn't even manage to get our Kodiaks online. I mean, if we could have got our Kodiaks online, there'd be nothing he can do. But no shield on his main base, a mistake on his part here. He should have been expecting this Retriever to Sentinel play as we've had basically no units for the game so we're immediately going to focus down this foundry here we don't want any reavers coming out while we're here remember the retriever sentinel is extremely weak if it doesn't have a shield uh, and we've been forced to not go down that route we wanted the retriever sentinel early um, so we can actually do some damage and drop it in because that, that's basically our only unit right now and you'll notice on the map he's kind of over committing on bases um, obviously he probably has count um, fortifications one or fortifications two on top of that um, so he's over committing on bases and spending a lot now it won't cost him too much but it is going to set him back for a while while we b rebuild back at home and he has to come back and deal with this sentinel the other difficult thing about playing Aatriox as Anders with the Sentinel is that this just shouldn't happen, but the chosen shots, as you'll see when it hits ground units, it slows them. It actually slows air units as well, so if he shoots the Sentinel, the Sentinel gets slowed down and it becomes extremely vulnerable to Reavers and you just got to kite like hell with this Retriever Sentinel to do as much damage as possible. So we're avoiding the army, we're doing hit and runs, we're taking out many base, we're gonna go pick up these two Expos uh, near our base, which he's took just so we can't take them. Uh, so that's a smart play from him just to take those because they are cheap for him um, to uh, stop us from getting our economy back online. But with Anders, anything is possible. You've got Douglas and a Dream with a Retriever as well. Uh, and as soon as these Kodiaks get online, it's going to be extremely difficult for him to deal with. The reason being is he needs Reavers for the Sentinel, but he also needs Hunters for the Kodiaks. And all the Kodiaks will be focusing the Reavers and the ground units. And those Sentinels that spawn will be doing a lot of damage um, to his Reavers. And if we can keep just kiting with the uh, Retriever Sentinel, there's nothing he can do at this point. So this is where Anders becomes extremely strong and you can start getting further and further ahead in the game so even though it was really difficult at the start you just got to survive try and get those Kodiaks online which is her best probably most viable option going straight for the retriever sentinel is great if you're going to build a lot of units i'm um, going to be on the aggressive i'd probably only do that if you you are ahead or it's pretty even but if you're behind like this, uh, you saw we had to go Kodiaks. There was, there was just no way we would have won this game if we didn't manage to set up those Kodiaks. So while all this is going on as well, remember to keep picking up the power notes. Uh, we managed to take two back during all of that engagement while he was distracted going back home. Um, and our next leader point is obviously going to be that shield for the Retriever Sentinel where it becomes even stronger because you can you can go in, lose the shield, come back out, recharge the shield, go back in. Um, so it's just a lot safer for that Retriever Sentinel. And we're not even going to be thinking about picking up this base yet until we have enough Kodiaks to save it, uh, defend it. And we're just going to keep constantly kiting with the sentinel keeping it away from the army and doing a lot of damage to everything else he keeps trying to take a fed base but we're not letting him have it we don't want to get further behind in this game Now we can secure our expo, we've got enough Kodiaks, he's going to be pushing upon it. So we're going to recycle that because we see a lot of Reavers in the background. He's going to be making a push up onto our main base which isn't a good idea for him. We've got Douglas who can slam it, he's already used his bullwear, there's the slam, the wire ability from the sentinel as well. He immediately drops an E-Rad so we should be able to get out of that because we're stuck out of the animation. Notice how much we are spamming the X button um, on this retriever sentinel to get out of there. It's super weak, we're not even looking at it, we're just trying to get it out of there because it, it is quite glitchy uh, sometimes. You have to really spam it to get it out of there or it just gets stuck and keeps fighting. So half that army got wiped, we're going to pick up um, the expo right in front of him. Probably going to get the chosen here as well as he's running away. Should die even though he tried to teleport there, he was low enough. Nah, he escaped, never mind. 
would have been a good pick, but um, it was a vet one chosen. But we wiped his whole army. This is where we start getting aggressive. We go push that left hand base over there. Our retriever almost died, but just because our carrying and our micro, we managed to save it. It's got his shield back. Uh, and we can go push this base now and get our base online. So it's going to be two bases to two in a second. Uh, once we wipe that one out, which puts us in much more favorable terms than we have been for the rest of the game. And we're going to pick up a third base as well. Now, the reason we're picking up that third base is because I know he's rebuilding his army right now. So he has nothing really to, to push any of my bases. He's not going to be making another push until he gets full pop because we're still full pop. Um, Kodiak's obviously on defense so we can start pushing those up shortly um, as we get more aggressive. Now we've secured our defense, we can start pushing them up to the middle of the map uh, and secure more map control. Start taking these power nodes map back for vision. Um, and if we if he doesn't scout that third base and we get that online, that's great as well. But building the third base is taking his eyes off of our second base that we're trying to get back, which we haven't had from the start. And this is essentially how you have to play Anders at the moment uh, with the Kodiak player, um, even though everybody absolutely hates it because it is extremely annoying to play against. But when they nerf her that badly, um, they leave you no choice, unfortunately. I'll secure this base just like we did at the start. Heal up the Retriever Sentinel. Start pushing up these Kodiaks. And they're going to help us push this base. Hopefully seal out the game. So from the Retriever Sentinel, um, you generally want to go into Sentinel Network once you've got the shield. Um, and that shield leader power for the Sentinel as well increases the amount of Sentinels that spawn from the Kodiak shells. So your Kodiak is going to do more damage essentially. I'm going to push up on these Wraiths. Wraiths are expensive for them. For anybody who didn't know, if the opponent doesn't have Detect, you can smoke the bases or units with Nightingales, uh, put them in Cloak so they can't attack it like we did there. And I feel much stronger in this game than I did in the early game. Uh, obviously, we were already 20 minutes in and we are only just starting to get a foothold in the game, but sooner or not, we will be pushing out and ending this game. I don't think at this point there's a lot Atriox is, or our opponent is going to be able to do about it. Essentially, Atriox should be able to break this um, with his leader powers he has. He has Dying Breath, a beam, Erad. He's got Teleport. Um, he's got Invulnerable. He should be able to break this, but we have a nice spread on our Kodiaks at the moment. You can see our Kodiaks actually spread out quite a bit. So if he's going to teleport in on them, he'll be, be maybe be able to kill one or two. But then he has to walk all the way across to the others to try and kill them as well. And you'll see a lot of people online when they're using the Kodiaks, they won't spread them out. Um, especially at a low level, they'll have them all like clumped together, so like one beam will literally wipe out the whole army. That's not what you want to do, you have to spread them out. Arika's looking really good, so we're going to pick up this third base. He's made a huge swap to Banshees, oh crap. So we weren't expecting this, um, however we are about to have more bases than him, so we're, we're just going to go for a base trade. We have a lot of base damage, uh, we're going to put anti-air units on our on our um, experts and bases, uh, basically because UNSC turrets are extremely good. But we send our Wolverines back.
You can see the panic in my clicks now, upgrading everything I can. We're going to come back and try and defend this. Um, obviously, it doesn't look like he has detect here, so the Nightingales are going to come in clutch uh, to be able to smoke a lot of stuff. Using Dying Breath, again, extremely good leader power. I think they stay alive for about 8 seconds after they died. Got to split out of that beam, try and save the Sentinel. And we only got four Wolverines with Douglas as well. He uses a bulwark. Using all his leader powers here to try and keep the army alive. We're probably going to lose the Sentinel. Not too much trouble though because the leader power is back up. Uh, but he lost most of his bounties. That is a lot more costly uh, than what he just did to us. You'll see the combat tech marines as well coming in clutch. They do a lot of damage to Banshees, air in general, especially earlier. He's going to be running into this base now. He should have just stayed at the other one, but there we go. I expected those Banshees to actually do a lot more damage, <laughs> to be honest, but they only managed to kill about two turrets and a sentinel, uh, and the army just got wiped. He's staying here now, he's wasting his units at the moment. Um, this only gives me the indication that he's probably swapping into a different army composition if he doesn't want to keep the Banshees alive. Uh, we just wiped his whole army, this is where we get on the aggressive, we're going to go for an immediate push. You'll see there, good use of splitting off one Wolverine just to deal with the rest of the Banshees. Uh, this is where we get really aggressive, we know we've got the Retriever Sentinel that we can just drop in. He's chosen all the way on the left hand side. We wiped his complete Banshee army uh, and we got a third base up as well anyway. And he doesn't have that, he has two bases. So now we're going to be pushing up on this base with what we've got. Uh, because he's going to still be rebuilding so he's not going to be full pop and we can drop in a Retriever Sentinel. That's essentially why we're pushing here. So when their base is in cloak like this as well, you kind of want to focus the cloak and generator first because if they wipe out all your detect, your push is over. So he just uses an E-Rad there. Yeah, it did a bit of damage. It didn't do too much. We managed to get the cloak and generator. I'm going to drop a Sentinel network now as well, which actually shreds through vehicles. Um, he has got one Rift there. He's really struggling right now, struggling to deal with this Retriever Sentinel and I mean that's the best thing about Anders isn't it? You can drop in a super unit at any point. You don't even have to build it, it's not going to take uh, over two minutes to actually build. Alright, his teleport is chosen out again. This base is free and open. This is where we end the game, folks. Unless he pulls off some miraculous defense here. He's already used all his leader powers, remember. Dying Breath, Bulwark, Erad, all being used. There goes the stun on the Chosen. The Chosen's weak, probably just under the shield there, so we'll be able to pick him off. But Now we're just spamming units to try and take down this base. We seized our opportunity, essentially. He made a bad push with the Banshees. It all got wiped, and we immediately countered. You'll see a lot of people, um, especially at a low level, for example, like if... if they push like that and you wipe the whole army, but you lost, say, half your army and you've got like, what, 50 to 60 population left. They won't push until they get back to 120 pop. But the problem is, by that time, your opponents are back up to that level as well. Um, so, you're back to a stalemate. You have to seize these opportunities, you wipe out an army, you immediately go on the offensive and you push, and you keep spamming the hell out of units to reinforce that army. And there's the victory, so we're probably going to showcase another Anders game next um, to show you some more tips on a different map and a different matchup, but that's going to be the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button.
So guys, on to game number two, and we're going to be playing against Voidus on Frontier. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is an impossible, unwinnable matchup for a UNSC player against Voidus on Frontier. And I would agree with you against any top-tier champ, because they make very little mistakes, and they know how to play very well. But against mid-tier champ and below, uh, th there's some mistakes they will make, uh, things you can exploit uh, if you play really well. You can still win the matchup, um, and we're going to showcase what to do in this matchup to give you the best chance of doing that might not necessarily win um, or wait completely but it's going to give you the best chance in a losing matchup you should lose anywhere so initially when you're playing against a banished player on Frontier, you don't want to send your units immediately to the center and collect the resources there because generally a chopper will go there and challenge you and, and try and kill your units and you're going to be even set back right at the start of the game, which is something you don't want to do. So the Marines that are coming out are going to be collecting the blue as quickly as possible because we want to grab these two mini bases to the side of our base first immediately. If we go straight for the center against the Voronus player, what we're doing is we're giving him a quick path to our mini base and also he's going to get combat spells off that a lot quicker. It's easier to defend against Voridus in a set location, in a set space, rather than all spread out all over the map. So that's our plan, that's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the mini bases right next to us, we're going to put turrets up, build a Spartan, build marines and try and defend this as best as possible because we know there's a push coming. Vor there's no reason for Voridus not to push. He's got combat spoils. Every push he does, if he gets onto your pad, if he kills a gen, he benefits from it, you don't. The, the only thing about Voridus, obviously they buffed his Grenadiers recently and they do so much damage to infantry, they are extremely strong, uh, they're reasonably decent against heroes and they're like suicide grunts as well when they explode in the middle of your army um, and goo pops everywhere and the goo itself doing damage so that's why it's so tough to deal with. But Voridus, one of his weaknesses, he has a tough time dealing with heroes. He doesn't have a strong hero on tech one himself, his hero is essentially a goo spreading machine uh, and that's about it to set up his leader powers for Cataclysm and Invigorate and Frenzy. So our Spartan's going to be crucial here, we need to keep him alive, the only way he's going to be able to kill him is going mass choppers, so we'll probably see us swap into a lot of marines with grenade throw to deal with them, and then our Spartan as well to deal with the rest of the army and the choppers also. So you'll see there we were going to put up a turret early on, but we actually went out Spartan quicker. It's only two minutes in. Now with most high level Voridus's, what you'll see is them grunt rush with grunt mines at about two minutes. So that's why we was trying to do the early turret. Uh, but as we push out, we can see nothing's really coming yet. Um, so we have a bit more time. And you have to go full T1 to deal with Voridus because what they can do, they can go choppers, they can go jump up roofs, they can go grenadiers, they can go grunts with grunt mines and it's all extremely good. So you need flamers to count with the grunts, you need a Spartan marines grenades to count with the choppers um, and you have to keep them off your main base because if they get onto your main base kill a pad, harass your mini bases, that's when they get ahead and you don't want them ahead. Voridus player ahead is really difficult to deal with, but if they're behind or uneven, it's a lot more manageable. So we're getting a scout around the map now. In the center, we'll, we see that they took our mini base, which is most likely that they also took their own mini base, judging by the jump out group that came from that direction. So our Spartan's up in the middle, he is upgraded and this is only a small army so he can deal with this by himself essentially. Unfortunately for us, we mess up the Spartan slam, we don't catch all of the units there, we only pick up a grunt. But we still have numbers advantage so we're going to push up and chase this down. Not something we really should be doing at this point, you should kind of just take this little small victory, back off and take the power nerds and set up for that defense. Because um, essentially we're pushing way too high right now and there we go, look, we run into his army. Our Spartan's already lost his shield essentially and the chopper's going to chase it down. This is going to be really bad for us and this is the mistake um, that we made. So we're just going to have to try and get out of here the best we can. Luckily, like I said, Vordas has a tough time killing heroes. He's not doing a lot of damage to my hero, but my hero is going to back off. Bit of an oversight from us, we went second gen um, despite this push. 
we know it's coming, we still went second gen, but I'm just feeling confident because I'm against a lower skill player. So we're going to commit to grenade throw and continuously spam units. Notice how our resource levels are always nearer to zero um, than anything else because we need as much units as possible. Grenade throw researched. Need a building cleared out? Our base is under attack. Let's get going. Enemy spotted. <clears throat> All right, he's doing a good job with the choppers that focus and outflamers because that's going to help deal with his grunts. He probably has grunt mine as well. Um, and we're just coming back now. We're caught out of position, so this is really bad for us. We've got two gens. Uh, we got one turret, and now Spartan's way out of position because of that early engagement. So he's going to get a lot of resources off pushing us here. Grenade throw is absolutely terrible, and it just completely misses the choppers. Trying to upgrade this turret to anti-infantry. Um, it has already lost its shield, so it's going to be weak. So we're going to focus the jump pack boost first because that's the main cause of damage. That's the main source of his income. Obviously, the more damage you do to a pad, the more economy is going to be getting off combat spoils. Uh, so we got a leader point now. So we actually hold on to this leader point for a bit to see how this engagement goes down. Did think about going at defense to help deal with the units, but I feel like the turrets and our army are actually going to be able to defend this. Um, so we're going to swap for heal anyway and heal up this turret. Turrets are going to be really crucial in winning this fight, so that's something we got forced into. If you noticed in the leader powers earlier, um, it wasn't part of my plan to go heal this early on. So we're going to spam and slam there to try and save this anti-infantry turret because that is absolutely saving grace right now. I'm going to put up a third turret as he backs off, so that is good for us. We managed to defend that pretty well. Um, considering we split up our units there because we don't want that grenadier to actually explode on our units and do more damage to us than is necessary because obviously the goo's already doing all that as well now the good thing about frontier you've got the healing spire so you can send your weak units all the way to the healing spire get them weaked up and preserve some of the units there generator upgrade complete point us at them sir and that was one intense engagement, so it, the game could have been over there. We managed to hold it on pretty well. It might still be way ahead into Tech 2 now, and we're nowhere near. we got no power nerds. We need to start pushing out and do something. we got Watchtower up. Uh, we got a couple of turrets up as well, and now he's going to my mini bases. So we're actually just going to get rid of this, uh, recycle it, because we can't defend it. So if you can't defend a mini base against Voidus, Recycle the pad first to get your money back, recycle the mini base to get your money back and just let them have it because you, you don't want them to get all those resources. Now he's going to be making another push onto my main base. He only mainly has choppers, so two jump pad brutes shouldn't be too difficult to deal with. Um, but we're going to have to come back with our spawn anyway. Again, focus the jump pad brutes because the chopper can't do much. He's trying to kill our gen. Good slam goes down there um, to deal with us. Uh, we can get tech 2 very shortly. As soon as we get tech 2 with a rocket Douglas, this is where it's going to become really difficult for him. And again, like we saw last game, we're going to start getting those Kodiaks online. So it was bad. We lost the mini base and a turret there. Got the Marines going to start taking the nerd now because we are low on power. We've got that flame on that base as well. Choppers don't really get a lot of resources off mini bases, but if we leave it there long enough over time, they do. He didn't pick up this mini base, so we're going to pick it back up, and we're going to take our power node and start pushing out now as well. Still only 24 population, we need to get that increased. We know his army is all the way up on the left, so we're going to try and sneak an expo here. Immediately put down the armory. Since Douglas is our saving grace, we want him upgraded as quickly as possible. Now you notice I didn't recycle the mini base on the left hand side. Um, that's because I want his army to stay over there. I don't want them in the middle trying to fight me. 
You'll see on the minibop now, they've just left. So the Amory comes up, we immediately get that rock hit upgrade. And Douglas is wrapping around the back. And here comes the choppers. So that mini base did survive, so we're still going to be getting economy from that. Going to be going the Sentinel Beacon to get those Kodiaks out. We've got the garage already coming up second. And this garage hopefully is going to secure our expo here. I'm going to try and chase down my Spartan, but he should be able to get away. I'm actually going to steal a chopper to try and get away. It's going to be rough if we do lose him. Yeah, unfortunately, Douglas is a dead man. He did a bit of damage, but not too much. So we're going to have to rebuild him now. If he pushes now, we're doing Pat Bruce. This, is, this game would essentially be over. Um, so lucky for us, he doesn't. But Douglas is on his way back out. we got one Kodiak coming out. That one Kodiak is absolutely crucial in this situation. Especially against Voridus. He's not going to have any shrouds or anything this early in the game. Um, he's still on choppers at the moment. And he's using them to the best of his ability. The jump at Brute coming up here. Looks like he's actually all units here. Kind of. Because he doesn't see the base. Immediately set down the Kodiak. We've got to save this base. He's got an engineer here as well. You can see how difficult this is when we're playing. Like, I'm still on 24 population right now. He shouldn't have rammed all my units there. Um, he did a lot more damage to his own choppers than he did to me. Alright, we got Douglas and a Kodiak, guys. We can do this. This is it. This is where the game starts turning around. We're going to get um, a pad up just to get Nightingale up to heal this base. Now, he went for my mini base. I, I'm so baffled by why he did this. He went for the mini base instead of the actual base. So you'll see us now, like, how fast we're shooting these rockets because we keep selecting new targets. Get a nice slam in there as well. The second Kodiak's out, and that slam absolutely changed that engagement for us. Doesn't have any detect, so we're just going to smoke this base if it actually works. And we're going to save it just because of that. That's how crucial Nightingale smoke comes into clutch. Alright, so swapping into Marauders. Marauders are really weak against um, Siege. He should have backed out a long time ago. We've got another Nightingale out now because we didn't lose our air pad. So we're just going to smoke the base again. And we, we, I mean, we got the Sentinel leader power. It's been tough to this point. But if we can save it for that Sentinel, we can turn this around. He's just wasting units right now. He needs to go into something else. He should have took his lead and gone into a Scarab immediately or something like that since we're, we're on defense all the time. So now we got this base online and healed. Uh, we are in a really good position right now, which is what you saw in the last game as well. We were, we were so far behind on Tech 1, but we got the Kodiaks out. We got that second base, and then things just start all going in our favor. We finally have some breathing space to actually do some macro in the background. We're going to be getting that uh, combat tech for those Marines. Spamming them are really good. We even got a Vet 1 Kodiak out of that, which is always nice. Two Vet 1 Kodiaks. Got Vet 1 Douglas. Everything's sweet. It's all starting to go our way. Now he threw a lot away in that engagement. So we've probably got a few minutes until he pushes. So we're just going to try and save up the blue for that Sentinel. We don't even need to build units at this point. We've got the Kodiak sale. we got turrets on our base. Just going to reposition those nicely, um, and we're just going to wait for that Sentinel. The game ender, the Sentinel, the ender of all bases.
Oh, he just gets the shield up in time. Douglas could have done a bit of damage to some of those pads. And you'll see there's some uncollected blue here. So I'm not desperate for blue right now. I'm just going to send my marine to pick that up. Still got the Kodiax coming out. We've almost got enough. And this base is going to die as soon as that Sentinel comes in. We're going to get some Kodiax pushed up to support just in case of Reavers. And Douglas is going to be putting in the work. Look at this. Absolute one-man machine. This is a good ledge for your Retriever Sentinel. They can't really attack you up here, but you can still attack the base. And if you do get weak, you sat in the healing spire, so... Unfortunate for him that he took that base, really. Alright, he's trying to swap into bouncers, which isn't the greatest idea. I've got combat tech marines and they won't be upgraded yet. He's gonna pick off a few of the Kodiaks, but. Doesn't have his leader, so. Not really going to be doing a cataclysm. We still have the Nightingales as well, so we can still smoke this base if he does get weak. He's gonna be forced to back off. Yeah, so obviously now we know why there was the delay in him building stuff during uh, that period there which allowed us to get back online. Uh, I don't really agree with his play, he shouldn't have swapped into Banshee so early. I think he just got so scared by the Kodiaks that he felt like he needed to get air online so quickly. Um, but just building jump pack brutes and engineers, he could have pushed that base and probably killed it and got more money off it. I only had like two Kodiaks and a Spartan. And he's kind of let me get back in this base, he's let me get the base, get the sentinel, get the economy for the sentinel and stuff like that. And, and he's going to have a tough time dealing with it. Now we got the sentinel shield, things just get harder for him from here. Turret upgraded. Turret upgraded. Turret upgraded. He needs to pull off a really good cataclysm, but even then it's not going to kill my hero and the sentinel, which are my two most important units right now. Now we're 16 minutes in, we're only just starting to establish map control, which you saw last game as well, and I told you how much of a struggle it is with Anders uh, in the early game, but if you can make it to this stage, she's extremely strong. All units. All units. All units. And we're picking up a third base because we've got a lot of blue. Probably going to be looking at reinforcements in a second as well. That's why we got the armory coming up. Just need enough power to do that. Alright, this is probably going to be the cataclysm on our main base. Uh, fuck it, why not? They say. Don't ever base trade with a Vorridus player, but there's no way we get back to try and save that base, so... He's used Invig as well, which he didn't really need to, but we're, we're just going to counter push here. I know, have, I know I have another base on its way up. He won't have that, so if we lose this base, uh, I'm going to have another base coming up anyway, so... Recycle all my pads here before the base dies so I can get my money back. I've got anti-air turrets on my base here, and I'm spamming the other to help deal with this. Alright, look how fast we took out his base, we basically traded there, and the Sentinel Network comes in clutch here. We're going to put the heal down as well, hopefully on this anti-air turret, try and heal that up, keep it alive as much as possible. The Sentinel Network and the EP is going to do a lot of work there, we're going to win the base trade. And that's how weak air is, like, I see everyone like airs OP, airs OP, airs OP all over the forums and Reddit and stuff like that, but look how easy it is to deal with. I mean, two anti-air turrets and a Wolverine just defended that. Yeah, sure, we lost one base, but we were on the counter push, and on the left-hand side, we have our other base coming up, which he won't have, so we're still ahead. Now we're at his main base. He's forced to come all the way back. We're going to use the Sentinel for the base damage, and we're going to use Douglas to just take out all these Banshees that are remaining of them. And there's a turning point in every game that I play with Anders where you just become so strong after being so far behind. 
um, that the, the opponent just can't win. It's an unfortunate loss. Got a super unit. But we're pretty rich. He's pretty hurt. He has no units to defend against the minimal stuff we have here, so we can just spam marines and he's already swapped into banshees, so he's gonna have no infantry upgrades to help deal with our marines. So we can just spam marines for days now with combat tech, push them all the way to his main base and just keep them coming. There you have it! Victory against Vorodus on Frontier. Can you believe it? I hope you enjoyed the video guys and I hope you did learn some stuff from this game. I know the games have been going on quite long and I've been talking for a while trying to cram in as much information as possible. But thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.